Gosh, one more segment. Good morning and welcome to today's video. Today we're heading over to New Milford, Connecticut because we will be doing the Macedonia Gravel Grinder. Now this is the second time that we're doing this event and the course this year has changed. So we have a little less than 14 miles of, of racing to do over the course of a 74 mile course with 5,000 feet of elevation gain. If you're not familiar with the Macedonia Gravel Grinder, it is a segment race. The organizer created a private group just for individuals who signed up for, for this event. And by starring the segment, it should be able to pop up onto our head unit. And so cross our fingers, it works, because it will help me gauge how much time I'll spend uh, on a particular segment or how much more I have left, how much more of the distance I have left to do. We wanted to test out a new gearing. I installed the SRAM Eagle on both of our bikes and with the SRAM Eagle derailleur. And so we have a 1050 in the back here. And for me, I have a 40 tooth chain ring. Jason has a 40. Uh, 42 chain ring and similar setup with the 1050 corset. I think I might be overly excited for today. Uh, it took me a little while to fall asleep last night thinking about today. Yeah, I'm pretty amped up for for this. Um, and about as prepared as I think I can be. Uh, everything I'm pretty sure I didn't forget anything this time. Everything on the bikes are charged and you know have have the nutrition strategy thought out and you know we'll bring the right amount of food and my plan is to eat as much as I can stomach today. Um, I don't know if Joy mentioned to you but we started working with a coach and uh, she advised us that being such a long day today um, the key will be nutrition and making sure that we keep eating. The week prior to the event, it was scorching hot with high humidity levels. Severe thunderstorms blew down trees, wreaked havoc on the roads, and with moisture in the air, mosquitoes were out to feed. However, the day of the event was quite different. It was cooler at around 56 degrees in the morning with clear skies, sunny and breezy. It felt like it was spring in the middle of summer. Come on now. Series for this year. And then we have a couple other events happening. Uh, we're working on five gravel events, including one in the Carolinas for next year. So keep, keep posted on that. Jason and I signed up for the Macedonia Gravel Grinder starting at New Milford, Connecticut. We signed up for the Mega Route, which was 74 miles with over 6,700 feet of elevation gain. This was a segment race, and in the Mega Route, there are six segments totaling a little less than 14 miles. At the start of the ride, we wanted to get behind a group of stronger riders and stay with them until the first segment, hoping to be able to draft behind them on the first segment and go faster than we would have been able to go on our own. Once we hit the road, we quickly found our ideal group. The lead group rode off quickly and we settled in with the second group. They were going at a pace that we could keep up with, but not easily. About a mile into the route, we turned off of the paved road onto Sega Meadows Park, which has a gravel walking path that connects onto a short single track section and eventually feeds into River Road, which is a dirt road that we're very familiar with. We had to dismount as we entered Sega Meadows because the gate was closed. As usual, I took longer to mount and clip in than other riders, and I was off the back. I had to go anaerobic for a short time to try to bridge the gap, and I was able to get within sight of Joy and the rest of the group entering the single track. Just drill it a little bit, honey. Just drill it.
I continued to push my pace through the single track. When I reached the junction of Sega Meadows and River Road, I was only a few seconds behind Joy, and she was maybe 5 to 10 seconds behind the group. The group looked like they had eased up a bit on a flat section, and I saw what might be my last opportunity to catch them. I used a short downhill to slingshot myself forward, then told Joy to jump on my wheel and I would try to get Arrow and bridge the gap. Get on my wheel, let me see if I can bridge. Wow, Van Art now accelerates. Adam Yates is right on the wheel. Just look at the gaps. Wow, the splits are happening now. There's going to be disarray behind. Yates is there. Venger got Tade Pagaccia, the defending champion of the Tour de France, is not there. Well, Van Aert's yellow jersey, this is a furious attack to win the stage. Over the top of the climb, solo leader, yellow jersey. We were able to catch them and stick with them until the first segment. It wasn't easy because River Road is rolling terrain and the group pushed the pace up all the bumps. So we had the surge to keep up. Surge, recover, repeat for about six miles or so. The first segment was on Mud Pond Road, about 8.7 miles into the route. The segment is 1.7 miles long with 1.6% average grade. It starts out with a bump, then becomes gently rolling terrain that goes slightly uphill overall. I entered the segment at the back of the group. I couldn't match their power going up the bump at the beginning, and they dropped me shortly after. I settled into my own pace and caught a couple of guys who had also gotten dropped by the group. We're on the segment, are we? We are. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm trying to catch some, but I can't. My legs felt pretty good on this segment as I was able to ride at the upper end of my VO2 power zone for about six minutes. time for this segment was six minutes and nine seconds. Ugh. I tried to quickly recover before the first segment, but unfortunately I was not able to catch my breath because segment one came fast and furious at the 8.1 mile marker.
In hindsight, I should have stayed away from doing surges to keep up with the group and maintain a steady pace just to bring my heart rate down so I can really go for it in that segment. Luckily, with segment races, once you finish the segment, you can recover for as long as you want until the next one. I wound up finishing 7 minutes and 43 seconds, which was over a minute of my goal. My average power was 189 watts with a max power of 285 watts, an average heart rate of 185. I made sure to drink as much water as I can and really spin my legs to recover from such a hard effort. Fortunately, we swapped our 44 cassette to the Eagle with a 50 tooth cassette, and this probably saved me the entire ride as it was not short of steep climbs. The second segment was on Hine Road, about 14 miles into the ride. After getting dropped by the group on the first segment, I knew that the rest of the day would be mostly on our own with no draft benefit. Pine Road was a staircase climb that featured a few steeper pitches separated by some more moderate grades. In total, it was one mile with 5.7% average grade. My plan for this one was to go at or above zone 5 on the steeper parts and back off the threshold in between. My legs were still moving pretty well at this point and I was able to execute my plan. My time ended up being 7 minutes and 22 seconds, and I was pretty happy with that result. Oh, here it is.
I completed it in eight minutes and 42 seconds and an average power of 203 watts and an average heart rate of 186. The third segment was on Scattercook Road, about 23 miles into the ride. We're very familiar with Scattercook Road as we've been starting most of our gravel rides from it this year. The segment is three miles long and pretty flat overall with some gentle rollers. This was a segment I thought I could do really well on and it's the one I was most looking forward to taking on. Shortly after starting the segment, I could feel that my legs were not fresh anymore, but they still felt good enough to ride above threshold in low zone 5. I kept a pretty consistent pace throughout the segment and tried to get more aero by bending my elbows in the drops. While I know that riding in the aero position on the hoods is actually more aerodynamic than the drops, I feel more comfortable handling the bike in the drops, and I knew there would be frequent gear changes and a few turns to navigate on this segment, so I wanted to make bike handling as easy as possible so that I could just focus on my power. By the end of the segment, I was really feeling the burn. My time was 9 minutes and 35 seconds. I'm content with that time. I think I could do better on fresh legs, but given the fact that I already had some fatigue, I think I gave it my best effort at the time. Since it's flat, my plan was to hold Jason's wheel for as long as I can.
After 3.1 miles, I finished a segment in 10 minutes and 13 seconds, which is a PR for me. Last year, when I raced the segment, my time was exactly one minute slower. So I'm pretty happy with this result. <sighs> Did not have the proper mileage up, <sighs> but whatever. <coughs> We approached the 30 mile marker, which meant the aid station was nearby at Macedonia State Park. Our coach said we had to finish two bottles by the time we hit aid station one, refill them, eat, and get our bearings straight before heading out. I went to refill my bottles and was searching for the scratch mix as advertised to be available in both aid stations. In the past, I treated these events as self-supported because you never know what it is and isn't available. But having participated in a number of these events, I noticed that aid stations were well stocked, so I g took a gamble with this one. I asked a volunteer about the scratch mix and she told me they ran out. Fortunately, I brought one scratch mix with caffeine and Jason gave me one of his, which had zero calories. Well, uh, we are stopped at the first aid station about 30 miles into the ride, a little more than 30. Um, Joyce is using the restroom. I just figured I would give you a quick update. So we're, from a racing perspective, we're halfway through because we did three of the, there's th uh, six time segments and we did three of them. Um, they've gotten progressively harder, but I think that's just from fatigue starting to build up. The last few days this week leading up to today, uh, we're, we're in the 90s with heat index close to 100, I think. The fourth segment was on Westwood 2 Road, about 33 miles into the ride, shortly after the first aid station. This segment was a late addition to the event. It was always part of the route, but it wasn't until a day or two before the event that the organizers added it to the list of segments. I believe they added it as a replacement for another segment that they had to remove from the route altogether due to unsafe riding conditions on North Kent Road. Fortunately, the Westwood segment was exactly the same as last year's Macedonia Gravel Grinder and we've ridden that road many times. So we were comfortable with the segment and had an idea of what our goal time should be. Westwood consists of a climb and a descent. The climb is moderate around one mile long and 4.6% average grade. The descent is about 1.5 miles long and is also moderate. It's possible to pedal most or all of the descent, depending on what kind of gearing you have. Since I know this segment well, my plan was to go above threshold on the climb and then continue to drill it on the descent. Things didn't exactly go according to plan for two reasons. One, my legs were feeling very fatigued once I started the climb. I think I nearly emptied the tank on Scattercook Road, and now on Westwoods I was struggling to get my power above threshold. I managed to hold my power just above threshold on the climb, and then I faced the second problem, which was that I got stuck behind a car on the descent, and it was going slower than I wanted to go. I had to brake several times, as opposed to staying on the pedals like I wanted to. Somehow I ended up PRing my time from last year by a little bit, probably just because I had higher power on the climb portion. My time for this year's competition was 10 minutes and 38 seconds.
So we approached segment four, which is Westwoods Road. We'd also done this segment last year and was determined to PR it since I have better legs this year. I'm just gonna start whenever the Strava says to start. Well, it looks like it's pretty hard path. We've recently replaced our old Wahoo element to the Bolt for better battery life, and the Bolt comes with colored screen. I starred the private Strava segments for this event, and it populates all the metrics, including the elevation profile with different colors to show how steep a portion of the climb is. I found this very helpful because it helped me to manage my efforts a little easier. In addition to the elevation profile, it also shows me how much time I have left to finish the segment. I kept looking down at the time and, and something wasn't adding up because it was showing that I was actually moving slower than last year's time. I finished the Westwood segment in 11 minutes and 56 seconds, and last year I did it in 11 minutes and 15 seconds doing less power. Now, last year there were more people on this road because it was the second segment, so I think I had more drafting advantage last year, and maybe the wind played a role also. Oh, oh. I'm here. Oh. Oh. The route headed into New York for the fifth segment on Dual Hollow Road, which was about 56 miles into the ride. The fourth and fifth segments were separated by over 20 miles, so there was a long time there for our already tired legs to accumulate more fatigue. The dual hollow segment was a slight uphill drag of 3.3 miles with 1.6% average grade. I knew this would be a long effort and I wouldn't be able to go above threshold. So my goal was to ride around threshold. I had a couple of issues on dual hollow that led to a poor segment performance. I was also having technical difficulties with the camera and didn't record this one. Regarding my performance, one problem was that my legs were nearly dead and I was struggling to hold threshold power at this point. The other issue was a big mental error on my part. When I reached what I thought was the end of the segment, I saw the signage on the course that said end of segment and I stopped shortly after that. After catching my breath, I eventually looked down at my Wahoo element and saw that the segment was still running. Apparently the sign on the course was placed a few hundred feet before the end of the segment according to the GPS. So I pedaled forward until the segment finished on my Wahoo. This bonehead move costed me about 90 seconds of idle time. So my official time for the segment was 17 minutes and 9 seconds, but I would have finished it in around 15 and a half minutes if I had not stopped early. Segment five is dual hollow. It's a 3.38 mile segment with a few rollers and obstacles like a fallen tree and barriers to prevent cars. At this point, all I had left was to do tempo. I told myself if I keep pedaling, I'll just move forward. I'm gonna come around your right here. Thank you.
I finished a segment in 17 minutes and 19 seconds and an average power of 167 watts and an average heart rate of 178 beats per minute. Okay, hold on, can you move up a little bit? What are you, I can't hear you. Can you move up closer? Gosh, one more segment. In between the fifth and sixth seg segments, we encountered another steep paved climb called Kirby Hill. It was a little over a quarter mile long with 15% average grade. Even with our 1050 cassette, I had to do threshold power just to stay upright. I think I was only able to get up the threshold out of necessity. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage of Kirby Hill because it was around a corner we didn't realize it was there until we were at the base. The sixth and final segment on Stilson Hill Road started about 73 miles into the ride. It consists of a moderately steep climb for about a mile, followed by a moderate descent for another mile. I had absolutely nothing left. I decided I would give it whatever effort I could muster since this was the last segment but I couldn't even get my power up the threshold. Car back. I rode the segment at tempo or sweet spot power, and it felt like I was going above threshold. finally finished the Stilson Hill segment with a time of 11 minutes and 11 seconds, I was relieved that the ride was almost over. There were only about four miles re remaining on the route and I would just limp my way to the finish line. The last segment is called Stilson Hill, which is two miles. It includes a one mile climb at 6.7% average grade and a descent. I told myself that another tempo effort is all I need to get up this climb. At one point, I was dreaming about drinking an ice cold water at the finish line and snapped out of it and to find out I was still climbing. 
Eventually, I saw a few guys up ahead and used them as carrots to catch. I finished Tilson Hill in 12 minutes and 57 seconds at an average power of 161 watts and an average heart rate of 176 beats per minute. I'm here. After Stilson was a descent and I did a hero pull to get us to the finish line. In conclusion, I felt like I really nailed my fueling strategy on this event, except maybe at the end where I forgot to take a bar. I got these 750 milliliter water bottles by Elite Fly Techs that are easy to squeeze in fast liquid flow. And you may not think anything of it, but a fast flow rate actually makes you drink more. Even though they ran out of scratch mix in both aid stations, I felt like it was still a good event. The terrain was a mixture of smooth gravel and chunky washed out sections to test your skills. The single track section in the beginning was a lot of fun. Overall, I'm pleased with the ride as a whole. While I'm not totally satisfied with my segment performances, as I feel I could have done better on some of them, I do feel a sense of accomplishment from completing the route, which was the longest gravel ride that we've done. I'm happy that our average speed was faster than it was on last year's Macedonia Gravel Grinder, and more importantly, I'm proud of myself for not giving up when the going got tough. I also thought that I executed my fueling strategy well, and that helped me get through a tough ride. I basically took in as much food as my stomach could handle, with a combination of solid and liquid calories. I ate the solid food whenever there was a long enough time gap between segments that would allow me to digest it, and I would take the liquid shortly before and after each segment. And it was a good learning experience for me. I gained some experience riding with a group of stronger riders, albeit just for the first eight miles or so and I had a lot of fun trying to keep up with them. I also learned the value of a good fueling strategy and how it can help me get through a tough ride. Finally, I learned what it feels like to do a long ride with several very hard efforts mixed into it and how the fatigue keeps building up throughout the day. Hopefully with proper training and nutrition, I will become more fatigue resistant and have better performance on events like this in the future. I'm looking forward to putting in the work to make that happen. Hi. How was it? Tough. Very tough. Very tough. Did you do that climb? Yeah. Yeah, there are many. Well, there were, there were a lot of them, but I think the tough... The toughest one. Well, 
Lastly, I just want to thank everyone who helped make the Macedonia gravel grinder happen. It was a fun day and a challenging one. It was also really nice to meet the viewers of our YouTube channel. It's always great to, to meet you guys in, in person when we can. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy your rides.